Ooh, we Carly. Why you made up this whole story about you seeing this toddler on the side of the road and you got abducted? Like, the whole world was sad. The whole world was praying. The whole world was in shock and everything. I even post this thing on my YouTube community tab. And I seen people posting about how it was a hoax, it was fake, and I wasn't believing it. But now it's a lot of, like news outlets coming out and, and coming with information and details about what you've been searching for so now you possibly going to have to do jail time like seriously so in Cardi B voice Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel, Vibing After Dark underscore with Mo. And if you're new to my channel, how about hit that subscribe button? And if you're a returning subscriber, how about send it to a family or a friend so they can vibe out with us? And please, 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 please make sure y'all like this video. That helps out a lot and thanks in advance. Okay you guys, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, we are going to be talking about Miss Carly Russell and this whole story about this abduction that she just completely made up now i'm gonna have a few clips to show y'all some is going to be from the uh law enforcement's coming out and saying things and some is going to be from tiktok but i want to first say that that little part in the front like part of this video was a little jokey joke a little light joke but this is a serious situation and i am no one to say that she's going to jail I'm not sure if she's going to go end up going to jail or not. That was just a little light jokey joke. But it was a serious matter. And it, it's coming out that she's not being truthful. And now she don't even want to talk. And her parents is talking. Well, her mother is talking for her. And she's only being a protective mother. What some mothers would do. I said some, not all. Because some mothers will take up for their baby, right or wrong. And they know they could be wrong all the way to their grave. They're going to take up for them. That sounds like what his mother is doing. But anyway, let's get into the story. So, just in case you don't know, but everyone probably heard about this story by now. Because this was all over the world. But just in case you didn't hear about it. Carly is a 25-year-old. She called 911 around 9.34 p.m. on Thursday because she saw a toddler walking along an interstate, I-459, south in Alabama. Then she was on the phone with her sister-in-law when her sister-in-law heard Carly scream and the phone fall onto the floor. So Carly's car was found by the police on I-459. It is suspected that the toddler was there to lure her somehow and we all thought it was like a trafficking situation. Well, I know I did for sure. I thought this was like a trafficking situation for real, for real. So immediately after the cops got there and there was no Carly, no kid, everything, like they immediately started a whole search party for Carly. And so I'm going to read y'all a little bit of what the police had released the next day. So it says the Hoover Police Department is searching for a missing woman after they said she called 911 to report a child walking along Interstate 459 South late Thursday. Carlita Carly Nicole Russell, 25, called 911 around 9.34 p.m. and told dispatch a toddler was walking on the side of the road. Before the police arrived, Russell called a family friend to tell them what was happening during the call. The family member reported hearing a scream, then nothing. When officers arrived in the area, they found Russell's abandoned vehicle and belongings, but not Russell or a child. Hoover police are unaware of any missing children in the area and have not received any other calls about a child walking down the interstate. Now, this was the first suspicion to me. Now that is all unfolded. If it was really a child walking down the interstate, I felt like more people would have Either stop or call 911. Like a lot of people, like me, I probably wouldn't stop because I'm so scared of these trafficking things. I would have felt like this. Like I feel bad that I, I wouldn't have, but I wouldn't have. I would have just called the cops and kept on going because of situations like this if it would have happened for real. But that was the first red flag because nobody else called. 
Okay, then it said her family believes Russell may have been abducted. They came together early Friday morning to assemble a search crew at the Hoover's Met. They asked the public to check gas stations, hotels, and rest stops for anything suspicious. And y'all, the whole town was out for real, like searching for this girl. That's crazy too. So her mother came out and said, whoever abducted her may be in a gray car. Her mother, Talitha Robinson Russell, posted on Facebook. Her wig and hat were found at the scene, so her hair will be braided down to her scalp. Russell's last post on Facebook was a screenshot she shared at 12.02 p.m. that said, My main goal is to make sure I reach my full potential. There is a woman I plan to be. I'm not her yet. I'm still learning and growing, failing and resetting, hitting and missing, but I still keep working until I become who I aspire to be. So this was the photo that her mother had posted, I guess, to show how she would look without the wig. And this is her uploading, you know, her screenshot of what she said. Then her mother goes to say, we are trusting God. We are staying positive. We are not allowing any negative thoughts to enter our minds. She told WBRC. So all that we are doing is trusting God, believing in God that our daughter will be brought home safely. Then it was this description that came out too. Russell is around 5 feet 4 inches tall and weighs 150 to 160 pounds. She was last seen wearing a black shirt, black pants, and white Nike shoes. So after spending like 49 hours of crew searching the town, people in the neighborhood searching for her, everybody searching for her, here comes her mother came out with a statement and she said this. So she took to her Facebook to say, great morning. My husband and I want to make this statement again, and we did last night. It's nothing more to add or take away from how we're feeling right now. God is faithful, and he's answered our prayers. We are so grateful to each of you for all the acts of kindness, generosity, and compassion you have shown. Our baby is safe. Thank you, Father God. We do want to ask for privacy at this time to allow us to just love on our daughter and each other with our close family and friends. Also, please consider the fact that we have not slept three days and we are mentally and physically exhausted. To our media friends, I promise we will speak with you and give you give a general statement in the near future as this is an ongoing investigation. We consider the media outlets that cared enough to share this story, law enforcement agencies, special investigators, city leaders to be our friend and we will be respectful for all. For everyone that has messaged or called to rejoice with us, we are so grateful for this, for your concern. Just as we made a commitment to not entertain negative thoughts during this time our daughter was missing, we surely will not entertain negative thoughts, statements, unvalidated opinions, or share ignorance at such a joyous time. We pray that those that doubt God's power, miracles, and the power of faith will be encouraged to draw closer to him and learn the power of positive affirmations and unwavering faith. We love each of you and are internally indebted for your support and love. Be blessed, the Russells. So then her boyfriend also came and he shared a statement too. And he said, I don't even know how to start off this post, but to only say thank you to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for saving my girlfriend's life. Also, thank you to everyone who shared a picture, came out to who met to help us with search parties and who went to proceed to tell other people about Carly to bring more awareness to her story. I have been going nonstop since I received the call that she was missing on Thursday night. I know she would have done the same for me, so I wasn't going to give up until I saw her face again. I was straight tunnel vision. Even when I would get on social media on my downtime, and see some of the false allegations and assumptions about me having something to do with her abduction would have me discouraged at times. I didn't give up and I kept my faith. I just want to thank all of my family and friends, former teammates and church members who call or text me. Just to let me know that they're praying and here for me. You guys don't know how much that meant to me. All I ask from, from everyone right now is to be respectful of Carly's situation. She was literally fighting for her life for 48 hours. So until she's physically and mentally stable again, she is not able to give any updates or whereabouts on her kidnapper and at this very moment. 
I also want to thank the people on social media who has been understanding and respectful about what she's been through in these past few days. Once again, I cannot thank you guys enough for helping us bring Carly home. God bless you all. And y'all, when it seemed like her mama and her boyfriend came out and say that she was brought home safe, but they don't want to talk. That's when social media just went and started doing their own investigation and digging up all kind of stuff. So one person had a comment and said her boyfriend broke up with her and she wanted to do something drastic. But when it blew up like that, she went home. Another person said she was at the hotel. So the person said, I didn't say it was. Her cousin said this was what happened and what was told to her. Unless I hear it myself, I'm not falling for it. And so the other girl said, allegedly, she made a call to her cousin from the hotel saying, I effed up. It wasn't supposed to go this far. And I think I'm in trouble. Well, your show is. So after that, like like I said, a YouTuber and social media just started doing their own digging. So they pull up the camera of like the interstate where at the exact same time that this happened. And one of the YouTubers enhanced the video. So I'm going to show y'all that right here. Okay, so as you can see, this car slowly with pulling up with the flashes on right there. And you may have to, like, go back and look at this video again because once the vehicle stopped, you can actually see a person opening the door from the driver's side and they got out and went to the passenger side. And it looked like they just went to the passenger side back door, but you have to look at it close. And like I said, you're going to have to look at it when I'm not talking, so I'm not about to talk during that time. Y'all could just go back and do the replay after the car stopped and watch that little part over again. But this video was like over two minutes long and you did not see nobody like came from out the woods or anything. Okay, you guys, so the video was a little bit longer, but I played just enough to where you could see her get out. But when she went missing, I don't know. So then the police chief came out with a statement and he said, let me say this up front. This investigation is not over. We are still working this case and we will be working this case until we uncover every piece of evidence that helps us account for the 49 hours. That Carly Russell has been missing. However, for the public interest... And in some cases, public fear that this story has generated, we owe it to our citizens to tell them the facts that we have uncovered. So I will give you the facts that we know today. So they did a press conference, you guys, and in the press conference, it shows that she was searching for all kind of things days leading up to this. So I'm about to play y'all that clip right here. And this when everything started unfolding and everybody really started to believe she was not telling the truth. At 7.30 a.m., the term, you have to pay for an Amber Alert was searched. On July 13th, at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught, was searched. On July 13th, at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, Birmingham bus station was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th, at 12.10 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about a production, was conducted. There were two searches later to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. So y'all heard that. She planned this whole thing out. She went and bought snacks and everything. She took the role from her job and everything. Like, I don't understand why she took the role from the job, but yeah. 
Then they also played a 911 call, so I'm gonna let y'all listen to that too. So y'all heard how she fabricated this whole story. And I'ma just see. She thought she planned this out good. But this new age technology is a beast. They can find out any and everything. So it's almost hard to like get by doing a crime these days. I don't care how smart you is. So just keep that in mind if y'all ever think about doing a crime, committing a crime. Just think about that. And I know this video was a lot lengthy. But I got one more thing that I want to play from y'all from TikTok. And this is just like somebody from TikTok saying this. Uh, that don't mean it's true or not. Like, but I just want y'all to hear what this lady had to say from TikTok. TikTok. So the update I never wanted to truly have to report on. So we've all been talking about the Carly Russell case. This is her Instagram, Carly. Over the last few days, you know, she shocked the nation. And black women all over the country felt empowered. We felt Finally pleased that America was caring about black women. Every new national news outlet was reporting about Carly Russell. This is the first time this has ever happened. The hunt was on to find this black girl. But then when she showed up at our house, yeah, it got a little greasy. Why did it get a little greasy? Because she just showed up. So then that's when the world got divided. Wait, what's going on? Something is not right here. Okay, we don't want to speak. We want our privacy. Something is going on. What is going on? Well, when you start talking about something, people start DMing you the truth. It looks like 50 people from Hoover have already got fired for leaking what's really going on with this case. And it's trickled into my DM. So you mean to tell me all this was because she was trying to get back at her ex-man? Yeah, that boyfriend that spoke out about her being kidnapped and held and tortured. Yeah, that was her ex-man. And he actually cheated on her with a stripper. And Carly had it out with the stripper. And to get back at him, yeah, she disappeared herself. And then got afraid when it blew up. This is what Carly said to the side chick. Itch, please. He told me everything you said about me and you thought I told him to say that. I wasn't even with him. You're delusional AF if you think y'all little conversation was anything more than convenience and the fact that he used you to get back at me out of anger. You want to talk about I don't compare to you on your worst day, girl, bye. 
you're miserable or at least should be being a stripper to provide for a child I've heard you've had from multiple people. So not surprised you don't know who your baby daddy is. Mention me or contact my N-I-G-G-A again and you'll see I'm not the one to play with. You don't want you and your whole family touched. You're poor. I'm rich. You're a stripper. I'm a nurse. You're ugly. I'm beautiful. You could never. You're the bottom of the barrel. Someone from the police department just could not watch us all suffer. So they released these details. Here's the update. She's sticking to the story that she was abducted. She says she was lured into the woods by some people who live in the woods, described as a person with orange hair, balding on top, tied her up and drove her around and put her in an 18-wheeler and fed her cheeses for two days, and they painted her nails. They kept her on 150 somewhere, and somehow she managed to get away and run through the woods to her neighborhood until she got into her house and then goes into the hospital. Hoover got some ring doorbell footage from her neighborhood, and it just shows her walking casually until she gets close to her house and then she starts sprinting and flailing arms and acting a fool. She got caught stealing from work that day, fell out of nursing school and has been on drugs. She had her friend behind her and that's who picked her up. She was with her friend all weekend. The police knew she was safe because she unblocked her ex while she was quote unquote un abducted. She planned to disappear and realized it wasn't going to work. All right, y'all. So what do y'all think? And this one has one of the memes that the people had posted on social media. Like, they making a complete joke of this right now. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this whole situation in the comment section below. I do comment back. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.